Recently, Mike Metzer has become quite popular as more people become aware of the benefits of high intensity training. A lot of this comes from Mike's impressive accomplishments such as his Mr. Universe win in 1978 as the only person to ever score a perfect 300 score. And the following year after this, Mike won the heavyweight Mr. Olympia class after turning pro with another perfect 300 score. So how does Mike Mentzer train to achieve such an amazing physique and what is it about his training that separates him from all the others? As a child, Mike was fascinated by bodybuilders that he saw all over the covers of muscle magazines. He decided he wanted to give it a go for himself and Mike began training at the age of 12 by just following the instructions in a small booklet that came with his little weight set, which recommended only 3 days of training per week. And by the time he was 15, Mike could already bench press 370 pounds, and he continued to push himself even further as he trained in the military. It all began when Mike met Arthur Jones, the founder of Nautilus Exercise Equipment. Mike was a young bodybuilder who had already made a name for himself by winning the Mr. America competition in 1976. Following his victory, he met Arthur Jones, known for his unconventional approach to strength training. Jones invited Mike to test his equipment, train with him, and it was here that Mike learned the high intensity training principles for which he would become popular for espousing. Mike refined these ideas over time through his own research and experimentation, eventually developing his own distinct approach to high intensity training. Mike Menzer's education also influenced his training philosophy. He studied genetics, physical chemistry, and organic chemistry as a pre-med student at the University of Maryland. This gave him a better understanding of the science behind muscle growth and recovery. As I mentioned earlier, Mike then went on to win the Mr. Universe competition in 1978 with a perfect 300 score. He won the Mr. Olympia heavyweight class the following year with another perfect 300 score. His incredible accomplishments show the efficacy of his training methods, which emphasize pushing sets to absolute muscle failure, using heavier weights, reducing the number of sets, and incorporating short rest periods. Much of his success had been attributed to Mike's unconventional methods, which involved prioritizing intensity over volume. Okay, viewers, as with the chest, with the back, we're also going to do a superset, which means that he's going to start his warm up with the compound movement. For beginners, a compound movement is an exercise that involves multiple muscle groups. Uh, the first exercise will be an isolation exercise, which works only one mu muscle group, in this case, the lats. By warming up with a compound movement, we warm all the muscles up for the isolation movement, and we also have the opportunity to set the weight so we can do truly a superset where there's no rest in between and screwing around with the weights. The weight's going to be set, he goes boom from here to the pull down. Specifically, there were five core principles that he followed. Number one, progressive resistance. This is pretty common in the fitness industry nowadays. Basically it means just constantly, slowly increasing the amount of weight you are using from workout to workout to stimulate growth in the muscle. But what made Menser different is that he was always pushing his sets to absolute muscle failure, meaning that there was no guessing about how many reps he could have left in the tank. This ensures that you are stimulating your muscles sufficiently to grow. Principle number two, high intensity. Mike seemed to prefer to use heavier weights and generally aimed for about six reps and made sure to perform each set to absolute muscle failure. Now the key here is to avoid jerking the weights. If you lift with a proper cadence of around three to six seconds and slowly change directions in your movement, you will drastically lower your chance of injury. Principle number three, fewer sets. Menser believed that we should always increase the intensity and reduce volume, which is the opposite of what most people do nowadays. But this makes perfect sense as Henneman's size principle shows that the larger type 2 muscle fibers are only recruited when the intensity of effort is high enough. So it makes absolutely no sense to stop a few reps short just so that you can do a couple of extra sets. Number four, short rest periods. Mike Menser included short rest periods between each set to ensure that the intensity of the exercise was high enough. Remember, the goal of bodybuilding isn't to do more sets and reps, but to fatigue the muscle to the point that it is now forced to grow. Number five, the mind-muscle connection. This refers to the connection between your mind and the muscle that you are stimulating during each set. He specifically focused on the lowering or eccentric part of the movement and the final squeeze at the end. This is because our muscles are generally stronger during the eccentric part of the movement, allowing us to stimulate more muscle. And as for the squeeze, the muscle can still be stimulated with isometric holds as long as there is a sufficient intensity of effort. Now with all five of these principles, there is one thing in common. They all work together to make the workout as intense as possible. This is because we need to be able to stimulate the muscle enough to stimulate growth. 
So if you're starting out, almost any exercise is sufficient to stimulate muscle gain. But the more you work out, the more intense you must push yourself in order to stimulate muscle growth. Just think of it as you must give your muscles a good reason to grow. If the set is just a little bit difficult, it doesn't really provide it with much stimulus to grow as it does not need to. Your body isn't going to spend precious energy and resources on something that it doesn't need to do. So why does this method work so well and is it backed by any evidence? Mike Menser's idea of prioritizing high intensity training, which is based on pushing your muscles to absolute failure using only a small number of sets, perfectly aligns with Henneman's size principle. This states that motor neurons with larger cell bodies, which control fast twitch, high force muscle fibers, are recruited last when contracting muscle. By pushing sets to absolute failure, Menser's approach recruits as many motor units and muscle fibers as possible, leading to greater muscle growth for hypertrophy. Another example is a study which found that training to the highest intensity of effort and recruiting as many motor units and muscle fibers as possible leads to greater muscle growth. This study examined the results of 57 peer-reviewed journal articles on muscle hypertrophy hypertrophy. They ensured they only included studies that fit a specific criteria to ensure that there weren't any bad apples. And the conclusion of this article was, evidence supports that persons should train to the highest intensity of effort, thus recruiting as many motor units and muscle fibers as possible, self-selecting a load and repetition range, and performing single sets for each exercise. No specific resistance type appears to be more advantageous than another, and persons should consider the inclusion of concentric, eccentric, and isometric actions within their training regime. At a repetition duration that maintains muscular tension, between sets, rest intervals appear to not affect affect hypertrophy. In addition, the evidence suggests that training through a limited range of motion might stimulate similar results to full range of motion exercise. So what exactly would an exercise from Mike look like? Remember viewer, you are a bodybuilder, not a weightlifter. Your primary goal is not to hoist the heaviest weights, but to stimulate the body's growth mechanism into motion. Not just the local muscle you're working, but the entire bodily growth mechanism. Again, the idea is to eliminate all momentum. I happen to agree with Arthur Jones that four seconds is adequate to eliminate any and all possible momentum. A typical exercise would be about three sets of six reps, but the key here is that the first two sets are warm-up sets. Therefore, very little rest time is needed. The third set is where all of the gains happen. This is where you push the muscle to absolute failure. Sometimes he would also do drop sets, which involves dropping the weight after the muscle reaches failure to then fatigue the muscle even further. Although in order to achieve muscle failure at six reps, you may think that you need to use a heavier weight, but also remember that he recommends a cadence of around three to four seconds. So for most people that are using a lot of momentum when lifting, which is usually a cadence of under one second, they may still have to drop the amount of weight that they're using. So with all that being said, here are some of the key takeaways from how Mike Menser trained. Focus on engaging the target muscle and avoid using momentum to lift the weight. Always prioritize intensity over volume. Make sure to use proper breathing technique, inhaling during the negative phase and exhaling during the positive phase. Incorporate a variety of exercises that target different muscle groups and switch up your routine every four to six weeks to avoid plateaus. Take short rest periods of around 30 seconds between sets to keep your heart rate up and increase the intensity of your workout. Get plenty of sleep and incorporate active recovery techniques like stretching, foam rolling, and massage to help your muscles recover and prevent injury. Avoid overtraining by giving your muscles adequate amount of time to rest and recover between exercise. He claimed that no one should be training more than four days per week. And stay motivated by setting realistic goals, tracking your progress, and celebrating your successes along the way. Mike was a pioneer in the world of bodybuilding and weightlifting, leaving a massive imprint on the industry with his innovative and highly effective training methods. Mentor's approach emphasizes intensity over volume, pushing sets to absolute muscle failure, using heavier weights, limiting the number of sets and incorporating short rest periods. These core principles are supported by scientific evidence and have been shown to result in an increase in muscle growth and performance. Menser's principles have numerous advantages, including increased muscle growth, improved performance, and a lower risk of injury. And not to mention, you won't be spending hours in the gym every day. Mike Menser's legacy continues to inspire and influence bodybuilders and weightlifters all over the world, with many of them achieving incredible results following his training principles. Thank you guys for watching, and if you got any value out of this, make sure to drop a like and subscribe.